Welcome to the broadcast and our conversation about good health and living longer. You don't have to be intimidated. You're with someone who's setting everything up with you. To me, that's the best way to do it. I mean, I've owned the gym 36 years. I have a trainer. Because I a conversation about your best interest, well-being, and good health next. Welcome to Talk About Our Times. I'm Litch, and I am pleased to be joined by the co-owner, along with Paul Carson, of both Powerhouse Gym in Berlin and Malibu Fitness in Farmington. As I said, I hope you're not offended by me saying my good friend, Jack Banks. Good to see you, Thank Litch. Thank you for doing this, Jack. I appreciate you? this. This being December, on the precipice of 2018, the program I wanted to do was a program on the biggest stories of 2017 with somebody from the media, best films uh, from 2017, and also the best music of 2017. But I said, cliche, always right. done. Why don't we look ahead to 2018 and people taking care of good health, long life, a better sex life even, if you factor that into the equation, with your meal plan and working out at a gym who better than you, so thank you for doing this, as I said. Thanks, Lynch. 1981, and correct me if I'm wrong, 23 years old. Correct. You, Paul Carson, Cherry Street, New Britain, open up a gym. Tell me the story. Well, Paul Carson was a uh, friend that I met in college at Central Connecticut State University. He was an avid weightlifter, great guy, uh, very passionate about lifting and we started working out the YMCA together in New Britain. And at that time, there probably, uh, I think there were about three <coughs> gyms that I knew of in Connecticut. And we said, why don't we open a gym? And uh, so we started exploring, opening a, a small place in New Britain. And on a, on a highway exit ramp on Cherry Street in New Britain, we found an old dairy building and uh, you know, we contacted the owner, went in there. Um, it was full of old ice cream sandwich boxes. It was full of freezers. And we actually got the whole neighborhood involved. And we hired kids in the neighborhood. We, uh, we you know, made a great deal on a lease, $125 a month. <laughs> and um, we cleaned out the gym. We gave everyone, in the, all the kids in the neighborhood who wanted a job, a job to clean up. And we opened Powerhouse Gym in August 1981, 36 years ago. <laughs> Since then, it's grown quite a bit. Um, but we've uh, kind of stayed true to our roots. You know, we, it's, uh, we still have some of the same members I know. from 1981, I know. 36 years later. Jack, I've worked out, and this is a supreme compliment to you. I have worked out at a number of different gyms. Doesn't do me any good. No. I don't look like I do, no, but nevertheless, I worked out at so many gyms. The ambiance, the atmosphere, the other members that train with you, both at Powerhouse and Malibu Fitness, it's, it's the ultimate gym. Both of those gyms are the ultimate gym, and I say that with the utmost and deep admiration and respect to you. I truly do. Oh, that's, I really appreciate that. Moving from Cherry Street over to Berlin, how did that happen? And then subsequently Malibu? Well, in uh, 1995, we uh, wanted to move into a bigger building. And we saw an Acura dealership that had just moved in Berlin. It was um, on Webster Square. And we contacted that. It was I, the building in Cherry Street was 7,000 square feet. We went into 17,000 and um, moved there in 1995. We're there currently, and uh, it was you know it was tough leaving New Britain because we wanted to stay in New Britain, but at the time we couldn't find anything that was suitable. Um, but the members came over, and then we quadrupled the membership. And it was still at the time where there, you know, the big corporations weren't in the gym business yet, really, to any large extent. But um, 
probably one of the most popular gyms in Connecticut, you know, when we opened. And still very popular, although the, the climate has changed in the gym business because now there's a gym on every corner. Right. You know, but right. still um, our focus was never on the drive for money. It was always on fitness. So that's why we still have a very strong following. Well, it's also about the camaraderie in there, too, as it well, is. Jack. I, you feel it. It's a, it's a, it's your, it's your family's home away from yeah, home type. It it's a family, it your is. second family, and your home away from home when you go into your gym. It really it is. is. It yeah. really is. What made you want to begin that gym in 1981? Let's go back for a moment, and then moving forward f to go on to Malibu. You know, everyone's dream is to do what they love to do, and. To, to go into the fitness business and actually be able to make a living helping people to get in shape was a dream for both Paul and I. And, and plus, we both loved working out and we both loved being there every day. And is that the, is that the, the paramount reason why you opened up Cherry Street? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, we didn't really think, we thought we might always need like a job and have that as kind of a, a sideline. But... It was an explosion of fitness at that time. So I think within uh, probably about a month after we opened Powerhouse Gym in Berlin from, from Cherry Street, we had 3,000 members, which was, you know, quite an accomplishment then. I mean, because people, you know, still, they weren't really, um, they didn't know much about gyms. So, you know, it was just like a, it was a new thing. Um, and then we decided that you know it could be a real viable business. I mean, like a real viable business. Like it was at you know at that time it was um, like an explosion in the fitness industry. And Malibu opened. And then we opened Malibu in 2006 in Farmington, and we built a you know a pretty large building, 27,000 square feet. And Malibu Fitness is a little bit different style, but still the same core. You know ideas to have like a family, a mom and pop place. Common sense, promotion and practicing good health. The Jack Banks philosophy is? Good health is not um, to make it a job for, for, for your fitness regimen. And the, and the reason is the people who really get overly intense about it, the flame burns out too fast. You have to do everything in moderation and you have to do it so you want more. A lot of people go in there and they try to get it all done in the first three months. I want to get in shape and after three months, oh gosh, this is a job. You know, it has to be something where it fits comfortably in your life. Your way of life. Yeah, your way of life. and. I don't believe in the extreme eating, uh, you know, the pure Atkins diets. The, uh, it, it's just, to me, I mean, for some people, they go through, you know, the litany of diets. And they, you know, go from one thing to the next to the next. You have to find something that fits into your lifestyle. Unless, of course, you have a goal for something specific. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're an extreme athlete or a bodybuilder, I mean, you, you have to do certain things. But for general health... It's listen to your grandmother and your grandfather. It's moderation, exercise, although they have to exercise more because now everything is you know, done for you. But it's something where you have to make it fit into your lifestyle in moderation. There's so much ambiguity out there, Jack. You know, people walk into different kinds of vitamin shops and GNCs or they go online and there's all these products, take this, this is better, this is more extreme. <clears throat> or they go online and they see advertisements or they see programs that you can purchase DVDs or they go to these, as you say, these corporate gyms. To filter all of that out, to factor all of those out of the equations, they come to Malibu Fitness or they come to Powerhouse and there's the simplicity would you start with a trainer? See, because we, you don't want to set up for failure. And as I said, here we are at the end of 2017, ready to move to the threshold of 2018. These people, 
that you're speaking to, they're eating the way they want through the holidays. They can't get their mind right around, I don't want to be intimidated when I walk into a gym. I want to leave my ego at the door. I don't want to feel like I have to compete with the person next to me. All of those things, and there's a plethora of them. How do they focus? How do they channel so that they can come to you, sign up, join a gym, should they, should they not have a trainer, Give me all of the specificity of the bullet points so that they can come in, stay true to themselves, make a commitment for better health, for their well-being and their best interests. How so? Okay, so for the real beginner, there, there's, there's different phases of, of, of workouts in your, in your life and ideas for what you want to obtain or attain. And now, if you're someone who has had a lot of failure before, and I don't like the word failure, but if you've tried a lot of times and then you just can't stick with it, I have two main points uh, to, to try to follow. Number one, a trainer is the best idea you could. I believe in trainers. Now, obviously, they cost money, but trainers guide you through it. The right trainer guides you through for relatively inexpensive. When I say inexpensive, I mean you can go on a vacation to the Bahamas for $1,200 for a week. You can get a trainer for a fraction of that for you know, a long time and get you on the right track. And that way, you come into the gym and everything's pre-planned for you. You don't have to be intimidated. You're with someone who's setting everything up with you. To me, that's the best way to do it. I mean, I've owned the gym 36 years. I have a trainer because I just need focus sometimes and I need direction because it's difficult sometimes to stay on that track. But if you don't want to get a trainer, I think the other main uh, avenue to go down is to get someone to go into the gym with you. And I think a good friend who could keep you accountable to show up and a place, you know, of course I'm pushing my own places, but that's not intimidating like a powerhouse gym that has an intimidating name, but once you get in there, you, you find that it's not intimidating at all. Or Malibu Fitness, which is more of a, uh, a place that's, um, I would say, more geared toward the fitness level and you know, less athletes, which doesn't mean they're not athletes in there, but it's, it's more of a, like a, a regular type of gym where and the average person goes in to you know, just get in shape. The life cycle, Jack. People get in there in their 20s, their teens, their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond. Speak to the life cycle and how you can train smart and well. Okay, well, when, when you start in your 20s, of course, you know, everything's going for you. You know, you have youth on your side. You have, you don't need as much sleep. I, I'm talking about for recovery. Um, you, you just have more resilience. So when you come in in your 20s, you know, you usually start gangbusters and, you know, a lot of guys go into, see how much they could bench press or they, you know, they're very excited about using heavy weights. But as you get smarter, as you get older, you have to change. It doesn't mean you stop lifting heavy weights when you're older because it, it is good for osteoporosis. It's good to do weight-bearing exercises. But you learn to train with more recovery, more rest. Uh, you don't have to train seven days a week unless, of course, you have a goal in mind where, like yourself, who, you know, you're, you're, you're a very intense person. But I'm talking about the person who gets in there who just wants to have general shape. The, 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 the evolution of training for, you know, as it, as it relates to age, is you have to train smarter, a little bit less, a little bit more recovery, and you have to, you have to eat where you're not making it into a job. You know, people prepare every single meal. Sure, it's fine if you can do it. You know, if you bring little, you know, Tupperware's full. It's, but it's impractical for a lot of people. So if you have a habit of going out to eat somewhere, you go to places that know what you want, mom and pop places I like the best, 
where you walk in and you, have the, you eat a very similar thing every day, lunch, a big healthy salad with olive oil and cider vinegar and you know, chicken breasts over the top. And you walk in and they already know what you want. You get in that habit of good eating so you don't go to McDonald's and grab two egg McMuffins with that cheese, and, which is not bad once in a while, of course, like we said in the beginning, moderation. But you get in a habit for the most part, the bulk of your day, you follow healthy habits you know, and, and, and don't skip meals. You, you, you have to fuel your body during the day because I always, I call it the appetite deficit. You skip a meal and all of a sudden at five o'clock, you have to eat a loaf of Italian bread <laughs> because you know, your body is just craving carbohydrates. So the planning that I say, planning, I don't, you know, other than uh, you know, your, your, your exercises, is your eating is most important, and that is don't skip meals and try to eat the bulk of your meals uh, healthy eating. We're talking about good, good health, nutrition, a proper workout. On the stress level, on the anxiety or the depression level, workout absolutely okay. is on the plus side, on the positive side. It's, it's, it's a medication. I mean, it might be one of the strongest medications for depression that you can get. I mean, there's studies to prove it. Um, doesn't mean you're, you know, you, I'm not advocating no medication. I'm saying that it's in addition to what you're doing or, uh, you know, to help anyone, anyone's anxiety. It's probably the greatest thing you can do for yourself. I want you to expound a little bit further on what you talked about before. Training in moderation, exercise in moderation, can be more beneficial even than the more strenuous exercise. So speak to, speak to moderation, strenuous, and even resistance training. Okay, well, I'm, I'm one that I don't believe in extreme cardiovascular exercise unless that's what makes you feel great. But strength training to me is very important because to have more muscle mass, especially as you get older, more lean body mass, you, it, it does help you reduce fat. Uh, and resistance training, you don't have to baby yourself, but yet there's that sweet spot where you get in there and like unless you have like a heart condition where you're or some other physical condition that your doctor says avoid this avoid that it's I think it's good to push yourself but start very slowly so you want more that's why a trainer is so great because if you get the proper trainer you'll want to tell your trainer no I can do more but your trainer's going to hold you back <laughs> because your trainer's going to tell you that you have to want more and be patient because you have to have enough reserve and have enough interest to continue it. And plus, when you start in moderation, you end up gradually building into a more focused and, a, and something that lasts longer. We switch to men for just a moment because they tend to have more of a psychological deficit in this area that we're about to speak to. As men age, they lose some potency. They lose some masculinity because of the fact that they don't feel as virile, they don't feel as strong. So when they hit 40 and 50 and 60, how can they continue to train to get the best out of their body for their mind and their good health? That's a great question because, you know, as I told you before, I'm going to be 60 in a couple of months. And don't even you know, which is even like, you know, which is, it's, it's hard for me to, you know, to, to accept <laughs> because I've been in this business so long and you see guys coming in who are, you know, I used to be able to do that. You know, you see a guy coming bench pressing 350 pounds. Well, my reaction is, I want to run up to them and say, I did that once. But um, you have to put it into perspective, and you have to say to yourself, I'm never going to lift those 
weights that I could have when I was young or I did when I was young or I'm not going to have the same physical uh, attributes. Yeah, you, you're just not going to have it. But you have to set goals in your own mind or with your trainer that you still can achieve a, a lot. I mean, at 50 years old, you can get pretty darn strong. And 60 also. I mean, we have 75-year-old, 80-year-old guys in the gym pushing pretty good weights. Most certainly. I mean, and you look at them and like, you know what their answer is? I do it because it makes me feel good and I do it to where I feel I can do it. They like, stay active. They stay active and they don't make it so it's a job. They make it so it's, it's fun, but yet not to baby themselves too much, but they, they can't set it. I mean, they, you could set a record at 80 if you're in like, you know, if you want to do a marathon, they do them all the time. But if that's not your goal, you don't have to be someone else. You just set a goal for yourself and you can attain a lot more than you think. Like there's people in there who are 90 who are in great shape. And they're more active and happier in their life because even just walking, instead of taking the elevator, going up one flight of stairs, no matter how slow it is, the more active you stay, the better you eat, the more healthy you are, the longer you live. Yes, that's such a good point because people, when you get in the house, and sit on the sofa, it's easy to start feeling lethargic. Stiff. Yeah, you just feel, and you say, you know what? I just don't feel like working out today. But you know, if you just get up and start walking around a little, great things happen. You just start getting into that groove. You, wait, boy, I feel better now after I went for that walk. Well, your endorphin levels It's It's are amazing, it's amazing how it's all tied in, and it doesn't change. My grandmother at 98 years old was still in moderation doing things. And that's the key. Don't think that because of your age you can't do things. Jack, as you walk through Powerhouse in Berlin or Malibu in Farmington, let's find that dividing line. And you see women from 20 to, as you said, over 60, and men, 20 and then over 60. The best way, and I know that we almost have to give you the Reader's Digest version of this and pare it down, but the best way for all of those people to be able to train, how do women train differently than men and vice versa, as you see it, the best for them, so they can bring out the best in themselves? You know, your questions are always so insightful <laughs> because uh, that is, is, is really relevant now because what's happening and what has been happening is that men's workouts and women's workouts have been converging. Now women are working out, it's almost indistinguishable. Like, you can't say this workout is for women, this workout is for men. Right. I mean, the, it, there, there's women in that gym who put me to shame right now, and we know who they are. <laughs> and I want to mention her name as one of them who's, there's w women in there, there's no reason they can't do everything that men are doing in the, in the gym. And I'm not saying weight-wise or, you know, that because there's different physiologies, but, um, there's not a big difference in what men, and, and there is, it, actually, there's, and unless you're to the extreme levels, there's no difference. They're doing the same things because you know, the pro women are proving they could do as much or more than men. Members join Powerhouse or they join Malibu. Each and every time, no matter how many times a week that is and no matter how long they're in, when they leave that gym each and every time, Jack Banks wants them to leave feeling much better than when they walked in, much happier, more positive, more whole, less stress, more alive, weights, little weights off the shoulder. Coming, I see people coming in every day, like intense. We have a brain surgeon who comes in from Farmington Medical Center. He has just been on the operating table for eight or 10 hours. 
operating, not on the table. And I see him coming in, and I see him leaving, and it's incredible, the difference. And it's with everyone. I mean, it's with everyone. People sometimes come in dragging, but they get through those two doors. And as soon as you walk in the doors, it's, you're golden because you're in there. And even if you just sit on that recumbent and just move, get some circulation, you don't have to set a new record every time. Even the interaction with other, you know, like-minded people or people who are, you know, trepidatious about getting in there too, it's, it's, it's amazing. Get in feeling three steps below what you leave at. And so when they walk out of there, they walk out of there feeling good, their mind is clear, you've made them happy, it's great. and it's all because of it's what great. you opened up those doors for them to do. And plus you're seeing, like I see people and they're bringing their sons, their grandchildren, guys who started at 25 years old, 36 years ago, coming in with their, you know, their kids and their grandchildren. It's great, it's great. Powerhouse Gym in Berlin, Malibu Fitness in Farmington, co-owned with Paul Carson. Jack Banks, my dear friend, thank you for doing this. Thanks so much. It's greatly appreciate it. You talked, they listened, and you set them straight to begin 2018 on a high note. Thanks, Lich. <laughs> thank you, my friend. And thank you for joining us for Talk About Our Times. I'm Lich. See you next time. Until then, keep me in your thoughts.